Well, hello there. It's Jackie here. How are you? This week, I actually want to talk about permissions. Now, there's a really good reason why I myself need to establish permissions or I need to get permissions in order to be able to do a treatment session. And I want to dive into this and explore it a little bit because, gosh, it is a big topic. First, my tip for the day is don't ask for healing in any way in group situations ever. So I want to lay out a few kind of images in your mind's eye for you so that you get to start on a bit of a good sense of where I'm going with this. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what this could look like. Let's say we have example one, there's a lady and she comes into her social groups online and she says to her connections, I haven't been around much lately. Um, I've been so sick. I still don't know what's wrong with me. Gosh, I've had so many tests. I've never felt so unwell. Actually, I'm a little bit worried if I'm honest. And I am so desperate that I'm asking for any healing, any prayers and any good thoughts that you can give me. That's my first example. The second example is, let's say we have this man, he's at an event for a weekend. It's a spiritual retreat and they're in a big circle sharing their desires on what they want to manifest and bring about. And this man says, I've been having major issues with my kidneys for months now. And they say that there is nothing that they can do for me. I am scared and I just want to be healed and I want this gone. I am asking for any healing available to me. So I wonder if you've ever seen this kind of situation where someone asks for people to work on them. Over the years, I've witnessed it many, many, many times, mostly in the Facebook arena. So the idea behind this is it comes from this place of, I don't care what kind of healing or energy work or modality you do or prayer. If you do it, I'm desperate for it and I want it. When someone does this, they can often create more conflict and stress inside them just from asking that one thing, playing with that one thing. And this can lead to a longer, much more complicated healing process. I think I said that the wrong way around um, than what they've had to deal with up to this point in time because some of what then needs to be ultimately repaired in that person isn't actually theirs. But it's now a mix up and entanglement with somebody else's issues that have been projected onto them through the sharing of healing. And it's come from the projections and the archetypal energies that are within the people that you would be asking to send you healing because they reciprocated. They sent you what they what they thought they would do what he, healing and but they don't just send you the healing that's available to them Al, along with that comes a lot of other stuff so we're going to dive into this to make you a little bit more aware of what's going on and also I want to talk to you about permissions and how I deal with them in my work and why they are so darn important now, before I do that, many years ago, I knew of somebody who came into a Facebook group that they were really well known in, and they let everyone know that they'd been away for a while because they hadn't been well and they were working with some health issues. And over the coming hours, I would say 12, 13 hours, there were a few hundred comments on that one post. Many of those comments were people saying a very similar thing. I'll send some Reiki. I'll do a session for you now. I did a session for you and I'll email you the details. Um, I just did a session for you and you should start to feel better soon. Mm. Or I'll send you healing. Or I did some remote viewing on you and this is what came up and another one was 
something to the effect of my guides told me that you need to do a liver cleanse. Now, this person came back after about 12, 13 hours and told people under no certain terms were people to do any kind of healing on him to him without his express prior permission that he had not asked for it and that it wasn't allowed and to do so was inappropriate and not wanted and that he had his own team of healthcare providers who were looking after him so here's some of what was going on with that and here's one of the reasons why he said that because he was very aware of what that means when somebody decides to step into the role of I'm going to do healing for this person. Here's some of the reasons of why he said that and what he's aware of. The first one is, and it's a big one, agenda, right? When the person jumps into being the healer without being asked, he has potentially multiple agendas going on, majority of which he has no awareness of in the conscious mind because he's just jumping into this, um, this role of facilitating healing. So there could be an agenda from that person that this person needs to heal. But how do we know what's right for them right now? or what their journey is meant to be. We actually don't know that. Another agenda is that, well, they're sick and they need healing. Now, many, many people these days, because they've shifted their perception and awareness around healthcare and healing and sickness, many people do not view the shifts or the symptoms that the body goes through as sickness. Rather, that it's just a process that the body is experiencing. So when somebody goes into the agenda of they are sick and need healing, that's a really big thing to project onto as an agenda to somebody who doesn't actually see themselves as being sick rather than my body is going through experiences. That's very different. Another agenda could be to rid the body of symptoms. Now, this excludes causation. And understanding cause and effect is crucial, absolutely crucial to healing completely and wholly. And when we're not doing that, we're getting a very uh, superficial Band-Aid approach to healing and it is not addressed in any way, shape or form. And it's also a very limited way of addressing healthcare. Now, the second reason uh, of why he said this and what his awareness is of this is that it, it breaches permissions. There's a lack of respect and a lack of self-awareness when we overstep those permissions and think, well, I've just got to do this because I can do this, right? Or I feel that he needs this. It's also assumptive. It's assumptive that it's the right healing that he needs right now. So let's just say I'm a Reiki practitioner and somebody comes into a group that I'm in and says, I haven't been around for a while, I've been sick, and I go, oh, well, I can do Reiki. I'll do, I'll do Reiki for him right now. And so I get off my iPad and I go do Reiki on him and then I come back and say, I've done Reiki on you. It's very assumptive of me. To, to think even for a second that Reiki is actually the best priority healing that he needs right now. He might actually need a, um, a cardiologist. He might need a bowel therapist, right? He might need a bloody good massage. He might need a dentist, right? So we don't, when we step into assuming that what we know is the right thing for them, then that's when that can become a big issue, right? And it also means that the person also is not being neutral, they're not in a clear-headed space, and they're not in a non-reactive space either. And when you are wanting someone to come into a 
facilitation process, a healing process for you, you want them to be neutral. You want them to be clear-headed and you sure as heck want them to be in a non-reactive space. <clears throat> so the fourth one is the mask of the uh, saviour. And this often brings out with it a lot of beliefs about that person needs to be saved. Now, this is a complex one because a lot of people actually from time to time find themselves all of a sudden they'll get triggered by something or they'll see something going on in the world around them and this mask of the saviour, it's like an archetypal quality comes about the person and they feel like they want to save and usually the person who goes into saviour mode is a person who has a lot of unresolved trauma in their life of which when they are then passing on uh, un, uh, healing that hasn't gone through the process of seeking permissions, some of that flavour the the the, the saviour being the saviour, the energy of the saviour, some of that flavour passes on to the recipient, recipient. And then also some of the issues around the trauma that hasn't been resolved, that's also a flavour that some of that then gets passed on to the recipient. So uh, that's a hard no from me. I, I do not like that whatsoever uh, when somebody goes into or tries to go into saving mode and then tries to be a facilitator for me. And it's why people get taught very, very specific ways to come into the space very neutrally when they do the work that I do, which is um, the body talk system. So it's wonderful. The next one is it's invasive, right? So that person who has stepped into the role of the healer, thinking that this person needs healing, is projecting their own imbalances and their own projections onto that person who is meant to be receiving what they're sending out. And that then adds to the recipient's own original um, issues that they then have to deal with. And it can very much confuse all of those points that I've just talked about um, can very much confuse any kind of repair processes, reprogramming processes that the person actually has going on in place. We can interfere with their processes. So um, in the work that I do, there is a crucial step that I must take in order for me to be able to facilitate any sessions with you, your kids, your animals, and it's permissions. Now, permissions means I must have permission from every level of my body-mind complex before I can go ahead with a session. It means that I'm in a neutral, clear-headed space to be able to do it. It also means I have permissions from your innate wisdom and every level of your body-mind complex so that I can go ahead with this session. It's so that your innate wisdom says, yes, this practitioner is in a clear, neutral position and is able to facilitate my session. I give permission. And if for whatever reason, some part of the body-mind complex doesn't give permission, then I have to work through that. I have to understand what is a permissions issue that's coming up as a priority and I have to address that which I can do very quickly very effectively but that that sits there that I have to address that prior to actually being able to continue in and do a session right 99% of the time that works and we can continue on with the session no problems at all and having a permissions issue come up to be addressed can come up no matter if you're just seeing me for the first time or if you've been seeing me for 10 plus years and it's your 60th time you're seeing me, right? There are complex and really fascinating reasons why permissions would come up as an issue from some part of your body-mind complex and it's beautiful every time we're able to address that. 
But we also have, you know, one or two percent uh, of times when permissions is not able to be cleared. And usually that comes up if, say, the person actually needs a completely different modality, such as they need a medical review, or I did have a client once that actually had a doctor, they needed to have a, uh, a, a review, a health check over, and this was an older farmer and he was seeing me for the first time and I could not do the session on him. And it came up as a priority that he needed to have a general health checkup by his doctor and that it was urgent. And so I sent, I explained that to him. He left, I apologized. Um, and I thought that he would not go because he was one of these really old farmers that very rarely comes off his land for any reason whatsoever. And he said, I don't go to the doctor. I don't need to go to the doctor. You know, he came back to see me quite a bit later. It was many, many months later. And when he came in to me, he said, you know what? He said, I need to thank you. He said, because I did go see my doctor and the doctor picked up something funny about my heart and sent me for tests. And he said, you know, a few weeks later, I was in having a triple bypass. He was so in such a bad way with his heart and his cardiovascular system, that it was more urgent, it was a priority that he get and deal with that first and then we can do sessions. And that's exactly what he did. He came back in, he booked in, and then we were able to go ahead and do sessions. A lot of it was focusing on the repair of the surgery and now continuing to clean up around the heart and the cardiovascular system. But had we not had that one piece in there that is permissions that says, can I have permission? Do I have permission to do this session on you? It would never have likely come up. I would have gone in with the agenda of I'm doing a session and I just go do the session, right? So that's one of many, many, many cases that I could talk about over my 16, 17 years where I've had clients come in to do a session and a different modality has been the priority. I cannot be egotistical and thinking that I'm the be all and the end all for someone's health care. I'm, I'm, I'm not, sometimes we are, but I'm not all the time. So I need to be um, really okay with explaining to people what's coming up and why and referring them when it's needed and being very honest about that. Now, I also get asked to do sessions for other people like family members without their knowing. Quite a lot of um, women over the years have said, could you do a session on my husband? And it's like, um, no, I, I cannot ask him if he would like to come in and have a session with me. But um, uh, otherwise, I'm not doing a session on your husband. There are certain times, however, that I can go ahead and do a session and not. I can't just do a session on somebody without their knowing. And, and it doesn't matter how, you know, hard the plea is. You know, my husband doesn't treat me very well. Can you please do a session? Or my teenager's yelling at me. Can you please do him a session? Um, we just can't do that. So uh, there are some times, though, and very odd situations where I can do sessions for people without first connecting with them to, to consciously get permission from them. And one of the reasons for that would be if somebody is in surgery, emergency surgery, or they're being in a coma for some reason after an injury, then that's usually a family member that's asked me. And when that happens, I have processes that I've been working with for again 16 17 years that it give me the ability to be able to go into my mindscape workshop and if you've worked with me before then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about when I refer to my mindscape workshop where I can go into my mindscape workshop I can call in the person that I've been asked to work with I can ask that person um, do you give me permission to be able to facilitate a session for you? And majority of the time, 
In fact, I don't remember anyone ever saying no, right? Um, so majority of the time people will say yes. I think possibly there's been one time this person was unconscious, but it was because they were in the process of transitioning. And I think that person actually said no because they didn't need a session to keep them alive. They actually just needed um, support in transitioning and in the dying process. So that would that would be one situation where I found that to be true for me. If I see someone who asks for healing online, I don't give it. My rule of thumb now is it's none of my business. No matter if it feels like it would be a brilliant thing for them or not, I don't do it. Twice in the past many years, I felt that I could offer somebody a session who has, you know, expressed that they're either going through a lot or they've been through some trauma or they've been ill or whatever it is. But then I have privately contacted them to let them know what I do and how I do it and I've given them the option to move forward of those few people where I did that one did and one didn't but that was no problem right there's no assumptions that it's the right thing they'll go the path and they'll find the way that they are meant to find so there has to be respect and acknowledgement of their body autonomy. And quite a few times I've been asked to do uh, sessions on uh, people in coma. That is absolutely doable. And in all situations, we still follow the same priorities in coming into the space with, very, with a very clear mind and asking that person's innate wisdom, do I have permission to do this session uh, on you? And as I said, it more often than not, the person is absolutely willing because they need the support. Permissions are so important and it's very unique to the kind of work that I do. I must ask if I have permission to work with you or on you. And likewise, you will ask if it's okay to do facilitation for another person or animal. We don't assume. Not all situations are times where a healer is needed. Sometimes the person actually just needs to learn and sit with it. Sometimes that is the healing in itself, right? Uh, and that's why I ask, do I have permission to do a session? not only at the start of every session, but very often throughout the session, I keep just checking back in. Do I still have permission to do this session? And I only do it then when I'm asked to do a session, never assuming that it's needed. So what did you think of today's video? Did it bring up anything for you? Have you seen this happen yourself online? And you know what? I've done a lot of work with the people um, over the years who have done that themselves, who have asked for help or healing and that it has actually caused them more issues and I'd like to explore that a little bit more but I'm going to do it in a different video because boy does that potentially bring up some other things that we haven't explored yet all right and feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button as usual and you can find me over on jackiemcintyre.com thanks bye for now